everybody and welcome to a visual verbal episode of words images and worlds i am delighted to be joined on this episode by creator drew brockington drew thank you thanks yeah thanks for having me jason absolutely may i call you drew or do you prefer lord brockington what what (laughs) no drew please yeah by all means absolutely (laughs) absolutely all right. Sounds good. Sounds good. Lord Lord Brockington makes me feel like I'm a Sith or, you know, something like that. Like I have a red red lightsaber at least. I love it though. I love it. You could totally, yeah. I, now I'm picturing like the Darth Maul aesthetic. <laughs> I, 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 yeah, absolutely. Um, so I think I can't remember if it was through DC Comics and my love of DC Comics or just the fact that I'm one of those people that goes to like bookstores and peruses graphic novels. I can't remember what the first book of yours that I came across was. It might have been Metropolis Grove, which we'll talk a little bit about, but it might also have been Cat Stranauts. Um, yeah. Which is uh, just a, it's a beautiful portmanteau. Love the, <laughs> the portmanteau. I yeah that and that's the series I've been working the longest on. I've been working about seven years on Castronauts. Yeah. Um, so that is yeah that's that's the ongoing adventures of those cat astronauts. And I I love that. I love just the fun kind of interplay of it. I, I think you do that so well. And I mean, as a kid adult reader, I'm like there's just something fun and creative about putting together concepts like that and then making it work in, in such a cool visual way. Yeah. Uh, it like for me, Castronauts is, you know, all of a sudden it became this opening for like, it it started as like a cute drawing of yeah. a cat in a spacesuit. And then when I got a chance to, you know, and then I was like, what else can I do with this? And I made like a little mini comic and when I when I got a chance to pitch it to actually become a series and it became a, a book series, all of a sudden it just opened up this like floodgate of NASA love that has existed in my life, but never really brought to the forefront. Mm-hmm. So like me, like all you know, like the memories of me like skipping recess to try to watch a space shuttle launch and you know, just like you know, going through these like uh, you know, just I guess they're like popular science magazines of like, what's the next space shuttle going to look like? And, you know, looking at all these prototype drawings or like satellite drawings. And it just really became that outlet for like, oh, I'm going to use all this actual tech and I'm just going to put fuzzy little cats in charge of them. (laughs) Love it. Love it. Yeah. It's, it's a great what if it's a great what if scenario. So what was it like? Let's let's take it way back to to the the younger days. What was it that drew you to comics and creating and reading uh, in in the field of comics? I guess. So I can remember. <clears throat> excuse me. I remember uh, doodling a lot as a kid, but I um, there was this this point when um, when I was in fourth grade that my brother had learned how to draw a 3D foot, you know? So like, oh, here I can do a, do a visual aid here. But like, you know how I, like kids would usually draw their feet like uh, horizontal, you know, on the mm-hmm. on the ground. So like they would be standing flat on the ground like that. Well, then yeah. my brother, he was like, oh yeah, I know how to draw 3D feet. So then all of a sudden they came in to that world just a little bit you know also it wasn't you weren't looking at like a like a hieroglyph or you know something like that like a a mario uh you know 8-bit version of somebody and in this 2d world it just turned it and and that for me like that was a real foot i saw that little change of line and that got me drawing all sorts of stuff and also that was the year that teenage mutant ninja turtles dropped nice nice yeah the cartoon um and I was too, I was too young for the comic. Um, but um, that just got me drawing those turtles all the time. And uh, so I was always drawing. Um, but when I was in, yeah, it would have been in middle school, like seventh or eighth grade, there was uh, the, so that would have been like 94, I think. 
uh, I grew up in Michigan in Kalamazoo, Michigan, and there is a, a, like a whole group of local comic artists that were really uh, proactive and productive, and they had their own uh, line of local comics. It was called Bulk Comics. They had their own comic shop with uh, selling all their own indie stuff in there. Um, and it was so cool. And one of the guys, Aaron Warner had his own comic strip in the Kalamazoo Gazette, the local paper every Friday. Um, and yeah, for, for me, that was like, these guys are making it. You, you're like living the dream. They're drawing comics. And, um, one summer they offered a, a week long summer camp on how to draw comics. And I, I got signed up for that and I, learned how to put a page together and how to go to, uh, it was Kinko's at the time, but how to make copies of it and staple it and make a book. And I was off to the races. But what a great thing to find in the community. And uh, also much love for the Ninja Turtles. I interviewed Matthew Manning. uh, I think it was yesterday, yesterday or the day before to talk about like um, him bringing together the turtles and the Batman world and all of that. So uh, yeah. Yeah, they they've gone far. They've gone far. They've they're uh, still going, which I love. Oh yeah. yeah, and the comic you mentioned it is way different. I did not even realize it until I was older because, of course, I love the animated series, the film. The yeah, you know, I met the Ninja Turtles at the grocery store. Um, there was like a getting your picture taken with oh, guys in costumes cool. thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so us- yeah. For us, like Turtles Adventures was on the spinner rack at the grocery store. So that was the book that we bought. And then I remember my brothers and I went to the comic shop and my brother, Sam, who was who taught me how to draw that 3D foot. He was a bigger turtle fan than me. He uh, bought some of the original series and took it home and we opened it up and we're like, wait, which was which? It's in black and white. And where are their weapons? How do you know who's talking? And like, you know, for what that would have been like eight or nine year old me i was like this is so different from what i know it was it was pretty eye-opening oh yeah definitely definitely and i love the so uh, there's that chain of inspiration of like i have a buddy that talks about the connections between daredevil and the turtles um and then like there's the, the way that they've inspired creators now, you know, with Lynn Wein and Kevin Eastman and just the way that they've kind of shaped the world to come. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, it's, it's the, um, I have a couple of the ultimate edition collections of the turtles where Eastman and Laird write essays after each issue. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and they talk a lot about that, like how daredevil just really shaped the tone that they were trying to do. Yeah, and it was yeah. yeah and um but i also love like some of the some of the things i get into where it's like we were like we ended up like what came out of us was turtles and we were like okay how can we turn this into star wars now you know how can we get our cantina scene in there how can we right. you know so they're always like thinking about how to how to take what they have and like shape it into their you know the next iteration and, and thank you Laird. not Lin Wein. That that L was in my head. Sorry about that. Oh. Um, but yeah, yeah. Um, absolutely. So starting with the turtles, starting with all of these things, I have kind of the the Ray Bradbury question of, you know, where did the ideas come from? And you've already kind of touched on this with thinking about NASA and doodling and uh, what if like uh fuzzy creatures were in charge of all of this, but any other um spaces that you want to shout out creative inspirations or or just processes that you go through yeah when i uh when i sit like now when i sit down to write a new story or work on a book or whatever um it usually starts in the um the sketchbook you know i'll be you know uh, a lot of times i'll be playing with my kids and that'll spur inspiration for something or i'll hear something and i'll be like that's a great title so uh, I did this uh, picture book called Puppy Bus about a kid who's nervous to go to school and he gets on a bus full of puppies by accident and spends the whole day at puppy school. And that was because I was playing with my daughter, who was two, who had a school bus and jammed all these tiny little stuffed animal puppies in it and said, Puppy Bus. And I was like, that's a title. And, you know, and I wrote it down and then would doodle in my sketchbook for like a, a 
you know, months on end, just every once in a while, I'll come back to that title and, and doodle about it and then start flushing out some ideas through drawings. I also got to give some love. Well, first of all, to the creative inspiration of your daughter. That's a cool story. <laughs> um, you know, that sometimes kids just, they inspire and, and they bring out that new way of looking at the world. But, but also the beauty of picture books. Um, it's not my like dominant go-to. Like I can't, it's not that you would find me sitting in a coffee shop reading picture books, although you might. Um, <laughs> but I just really appreciate them because they do so much in a really constrained space. And um, I've, I've had a couple of people on that have talked about them as poetry mingled with uh, images. So uh, also yeah. love to that medium as well. They are hard to write because you, yeah, you only have, I think I have 36 pages to fit an entire story and visuals in, and have the same arcs that you can tell in a 200 page graphic novel. Like I, I need to have that same character arc, but in 36 pages of, you know, 800 words or less. So it's, it's a big, big, big challenge. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so the creative sandbox of DC comics, I feel like I should mention that. And then we'll talk about waffles and what you're reading right now. Sure. Um, <clears throat> so curious because your visual take on characters that I love was just one of those things that I thought this is so unique. It, it's such a unique vision in Metropolis Grove. I love the the way that you go about establishing that visual world. Um, what's it like to play in, in those kind of sandboxes and get to kind of pull out those action figures and assemble them in, in your visions the way that you want? Yeah, that was like Metropolis Grove was, you know, I was a kid who, who grew up playing with superpowers action figures and hey. they'd always lose the one arm, you know, so I had a lot oh, of yeah. uh, one arm superheroes having epic battles um, and uh, yeah, pitching DC Metropolis Grove was like they they had very specific rules where you know they didn't want another bruce wayne and boarding school story they wanted something for kids uh and then they said from that point on you can do whatever you want and you know if you use somebody other than you know the a member of the justice league then that's even better and so that got my mind worrying with like, okay, who can I have fun with? Who's like, who could be kind of funny? I, you know, I, I didn't want to do an epic story. I wanted to do just like, a, uh, you know, someone that I could play off with the kids a lot. Um, and I settled on Bizarro because I liked his, I was like, oh, he's very childlike. And especially the you know and the fact that i don't have to stick to the current version of bizarro i could use whoever uh so i went back to the version where lex luther was cloning superman and uh he's basically a half-baked clone and he's escaped from lex corp and he thinks he is superman and he's trying to figure out what kind of hero he's gonna be and then um I paired that with these kids that are in middle school who that's all at that age of, you know, figuring out who you are and who your friends are and, and how to treat people as friends and uh, things like that. And I, I thought that that worked really well together. Um, and it was, I was, part of me was like really afraid to put it in Metropolis um, mm. because, you know, because there's so much weight in there. So I set it in the suburbs outside of Metropolis, which I really liked at this place called Metropolis Grove. Um, and uh, and then I added in, um, you know, little bits of that that world to make it real. Like, you know, you're in the suburbs, so you're still going to get the Daily Planet. And the kids are in school and they're doing research. So they're going to the Daily Planet online. And, you know, so it was it was really more um it was more immersive into the world of superman than i initially thought it was going to be but it had me like i had a map of metropolis figuring out where you know where a character used to live because they used to live in the city and then making sure i had you know all those these references that you know could make it feel like it was you know still existing in that world was was really fun to kind of pair with 
Very cool. Very cool. There, yeah, and there, shout out. I was, to, uh, oh, there was one moment that I was, um, uh, the school, the middle school, Metropolis Grove Middle School, where the, the kids go to, um, the principal, I wanted to make Amanda Waller's like brother. And so it was Principal Waller. And then that was, I remember the editor being like, I don't think the Wallers would be, <laughs> would have, a, you know, they seem a little more top secret than a principal at a middle school outside of Metropolis. I was like, okay, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I can see that though. I can see that. I, I got the visual in my head. Yeah. Principal right? Waller. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I was just going to also shout out one armed superpowers action figures because. I mean, if you were a kid in the eighties, yeah, that was, or now with Todd McFarlane re-releasing them, I guess if you're a kid right now, um, it's totally a thing. Totally yeah, a thing. it's it's easier. It happens easierly than you think it would. Yeah. Um, before we talk about waffles and pancakes, did you? We were talking about reading right before we jumped in, and I talked about reading Menarca. Um, several Batman titles that came out today because I'm always reading in, in that world and um, a, a couple of other things that were on my table, but did you have some reader reading that you wanted to shout out that you're currently? Yeah. Enjoying? The current, so I do, I read a lot of, I basically uh, realized that the physical reading that I do is always in some sort of comic or graphic novel because that's how you need to take it in. And then, any other like novels or fiction or things like that is through a audio book uh, <laughs> while I'm, while I'm drawing. So that's kind of a fun thing where like every night before bed, I have a stack of comics or graphics that I'm going through. Um, and some current ones are, I'm reading the first cat in space ate pizza. Um, it's a, it's a kid's graphic novel, like a middle grade graphic novel, but it's all, it's so beautiful. It's done in colored pencil and it's about uh, a space cat and a princess on the moon. And uh, like, it's, it's, uh, it's, you know, it's just gets off on a tangent adventure kind of thing like that. Um, that one's really fun. Uh, I just picked up the Ballad of Yaba. It's um, uh, like a, manga style uh, yeah 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 and it's it's they're small little books they're like 10 volumes i saw on the shelf so i started with the first three but the uh, the artwork's so beautiful and it's in 1930s um i forget if it said japan or taiwan um but it's it's in the 30s it's set in uh an asian country it's i don't know it's, it seems very very fun so far i haven't cracked that open yet those are on my my bedside table um and then i grabbed a couple of my favorites yeah um so this one uh the usagi ojimbo saga is nice, yeah. like my uh you know go to for everything i've collected all the trades now and like i'll i'll read this for panel layout and structure and how to like craft a visual story like this is this is the, the beautiful stuff um and then spill zone was a recent one in the last like five or ten years yeah, yeah. But, scott westerfield yeah um this is a really really cool story uh it's two volumes and um it's kind of post-apocalypse and a uh, story about two sisters um that are figuring things out uh with missing their parents but it's a really 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 cool kind of neo future dystopia uh but not dystopia um and then this was our pact with ryan andrews it. was mm. is basically like miyazaki flavored uh adventure um just kind of wanders about these kids on a bike that just wander into this magical world and meet a talking bear and goes from there um but yeah this one is very very fun too so those uh, are yeah, those are like okay. my top three spielberg meets miyazaki yeah very much yeah. so uh bee wolf or beowulf was the other one that i was trying to remember the retelling of beowulf through oh. kids poetry which is beautiful is both like a poem reconceptualized 
but also with the visuals. So that that's another cool one as well. Is it um, a single illustrator on that? Like it's a it author it... illustrator okay uh, cool. combo, and I'll look cool. up the the combo so I can give it a proper shout out. But before I do that, I want to shout out uh, waffles and pancakes as well, and give you the chance to talk about any of the other uh, work that's forthcoming that's out there, as well as catstronauts, catstronauts, yeah, um, yeah. Uh, so waffles and pancake is the companion series to catstronauts. Um, uh, so the yeah, the catstronauts, like I said earlier, it's the longest running thing I've been working on for uh, the past seven years. Um, I've done six full Castronauts graphic novels, um, about, you know, NASA inspired cats in space. Sometimes they're saving the world. Sometimes they're just trying to do an experiment. And, um, after those six books, uh, the publisher approached me and said, Hey, we want to do something a little younger with these characters. So I pitched, um, uh, the stories about, how these kittens eventually wanted to become an astronaut um because you know i'm thinking like when i was a kid everybody in my class wanted to be an astronaut at some point you know and um and then just kind of who actually goes i think there was one kid in my class who went on to actually work in aerospace Mm -hmm. um but like you know, those types of milestones that really help shape what you are going to do later in life. Um, so uh, showing kind of what led these kittens into uh, into loving space and learning about science and, and uh, where they want to go, you know, eventually to become astronauts and go into space. Uh, and then we... Uh, Publishers said, like, this is great, cool, let's focus just on waffles, we'll start with one, and uh, so we did the whole, uh, I'm on book three now of a four book run with waffles and his sister Pancake, and they are, they visit the planetarium, they learn about constellations, they go on an airplane, they try to figure out how these airplane actually works, how it stays in the air, Uh, and then in this third book they uh get to see a space shuttle launch but the launch is delayed so they tried to build their own rocket and uh come with some uh ex- you know experience the frustration of uh you know having to build a prototype and test it and and you know troubleshoot to see if they can get it to work and in the last book which is coming out this October they are going to go to space cat camp and uh, actually learn what it's like to work together as a team for the first time uh, on a, a space simulator mission. Nice, nice, cool, very cool. And I love the the in sort of built in natural like science, problem solution, technology, engineering, all of that kind of stuff. And it's also it's just a fun story as well. Yeah, yeah. My my goal is to make them uh like castronauts are epic adventures and uh, my goal is to make these kitten the waffles and pancake books like everyday adventures that still have that same type of uh you know gripping story but on a very you know a kitten size scale and then uh just as the nature of what they're exposed to they are inadvertently learning about all this you know the science technology and engineering and math portions of it yeah, love it, love it. Um, so the the author creator team is Zach Wienersmith and Boulet on Beowulf, but they are not here, and you are. So I'm just gonna say again, um, waffles and pancake and uh, cat astronauts, Metropolis Grove, um, all the I, good things. I all can say things. I'm working on two new astronaut adventures um so picking up the main series again and continuing those cats and you know yeah the further adventures of cats in space um, nice nice love it so yeah and and you know the educator in me says if i get a student reading those if i get a student that enjoys those or parents at home that are like what can what what's my kid gonna read you know, it's that thing of like, what are they going to read next after they've read one? And so it's so great to have that 
graphic novel universe uh, to explore and to expand into. Yeah, yes. And then also, too, with that, like what I'm finding that, especially with graphic novels, is kids will read them over and over and over again, like way mm-hmm. more than you would just, a, you know, a chapter book of, of something um, like that first cat in space ate a pizza book that's on my bedside table. I've had it home now for two weeks, but my son has stole it every night I'm gonna read it and I always I'm like where is it I always find it in his room he's always stealing it and reading it and he's he must have read it now like five times yeah yeah you can't get a better review than that you know right if if there are kids grabbing your books all the time yeah 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 oh (laughs) excuse me thank you so much for spending some time on words images and worlds and I'll be sure to link, you have an author site. I'll be sure to link um, in the description of the episode and highly recommend, again, recommend your work to folks out there that are looking for some good graphic novels to dig into and some picture books as well. Awesome. Thank you so much, Jason. Yeah, thank you. <laughs>